Well, of course, the 2021 Derby venue switches back to Toaster, and Toaster has made several changes since the Derby was last held there. Uh, JK, I know that you've been pretty impressed with the track of late. From the 1st of May, without a shadow of a doubt, I think the new tracks have made all the difference. I wasn't uh, I wasn't a fan, maybe, of what we were seeing from Toaster earlier this year. Um, but I think it's amazing the difference getting a a proper set of starting traps has made. All of a sudden, the track makes sense. We're seeing Greyhounds win from the front. We're seeing Greyhounds win from behind. Um, uh, it was fantastic. The, the whole place looked fantastic on Tuesday for the Maiden Derby final. Obviously, the weather was quite kind, even though you were whinging a bit about it raining earlier on, I know. But, it, it you know, Toaster in the summer, it, what a place to stage Greyhound racing. And I don't know what was wrong with the previous set of starting traps. It may have been that there were a, a set of eight cut down to six and the weighting wasn't correct, but there was just simply far too much movement. It was too haphazard. Now, in one fell swoop, that issue appears to have been totally eradicated and the greyhounds can do the talking on the track, which, of course, has been modified. It's not as wide as it was. Um, and now, now I think we're starting to see the benefit of that. Now that greyhounds are coming out relatively together and not, you know, like strung out on a washing line, the, the track is being seen to best advantage for me. So yeah. what I would say is anything that happened before the 1st of May, ignore. I think Lofty would concur that it was absolutely freezing there for that maiden derby final. But uh, Ian, is it fair to say that some Irish greyhounds have absolutely taken to it, with it being a very different sort of track? For example, Native My Show just looks so comfortable there. And some maybe haven't come out quite as well there as you thought they might. I've been relatively happy with a few of them. Um, you know, obviously JT Wexford didn't handle the place at all. He's not going to the English Derby. They've taken him out. Sizzler was probably never going to take to the place. He's such a wide runner around Shelburne Park. He's still there. Um, I don't know if he's going to go for the English Derby or not. He perhaps won't. Um, but all in all, I think version 3.0 of Toaster, as JK said, that we saw version 1.0 you know, two English winners there a few years back, um, version 2.0 before May 1st, and then version 3.0, I think it's an absolute world of difference. Must say congratulations to all involved in Toaster. They are very reactive. Um, much in the same way Nottingham was last year. And I don't think it's a coincidence that Nathan Cortham is involved in both. Um, I think he listens. I think he has an understanding of the sport. And I think that we are looking at perhaps one of the most exciting derbies in a long, long time. Obviously, it would be better if there were three or four more English dogs ready to challenge our very, very best. No, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. No, because obviously you want the very best competition. We wanted the ice and fires there. We wanted Southwood Jet there. Um, but I think the track itself, I don't think there'd be any excuses. The old traps were like they were made from tinfoil. You know, there was more movement in them. You know, it looked like it was a cut-up cornish box with a few bits of string. Whereas now there's a bit of solidity to do it. Every dog can come out of traps. And as a result, we're seeing a lot of wide running dogs performing very well i don't i'm not going to make too harsh a judgment in terms of where i think the dog should be running from um, at this early stage i think when we do get a larger a sample size with more derby trial six and when that first and second round are over i think you'll really have a, a better grasp of the stadium and the track but by all accounts i think it's perfectly fair i don't think it'd be any excuses and i do think the best dogs will emerge triumphant which is something that couldn't be said version 1.0 at Toaster much of the time. Okay, granted, there were two very good Derby winners there and you can't make any excuses for that. Version 2.0 of Toaster with the traps, it was just too much up in the air. We were seeing too many mishaps, but I think this newest version, it's, yeah, I think it's top class. Obviously, facilities have always been there. It's going to be an unbelievable venue for Derby finals going forward. But thankfully, I think we now have a track that lives up to the standards that we, we expect from an English Derby and I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, I think it's definitely levelled out the the seeded runners as well as against the railers. I think uh, it's very fair in that regard. A couple of other anti-post markets that you set up, Lofty, which uh, I'm, not, I'm not liking very much, to be honest. Uh, English versus Irish, first of all. Let's go for this one. 4 to 11 for the Irish. I put up 4 to 7 and there was a bit of them. Um... Like a lot of people saying that four to seven is like the bigger gift than what the track record at Nottingham going was. I mean, like nine to four that. Um, I think we've got at least got the shorter price right this time. You know, I was looking at the, the numerical numbers really. It's a bit like, you know, when you saw the, you ever watch the film Zulu and see the Welsh guards at Walks Drift, you know, and there's like a hundred of those and, and 4,000 Zulus and the number you think well, would favour the, would favour the opposition, but they didn't. So, um, yeah, uh, four to, uh, four to seven was taken, then four to nine and two to five was taken. So we now got a, 
levelled out book a little bit. We've now got two to one, uh, a great British winner. Now, you know, that looks about like about right. Obviously, stop in from gloating. We've got the previous, we can say the tape, the version 1.0, the previous two derbies were won by English trained dogs. But again, you can say, have we got dogs of the quality of the Rotors, Wildcat and Droopy's Verve now in the, uh, you know, in, in the GB squad? I don't think we have this time. You know, there's some very nice dogs in the uh, in the UK lineup, but I don't think they say there's no the Rotors, Wildcat or Droopy's Verve there. Other market we got at the moment available is the, again, the many Irish trained finalists. I put up 25 to 1, 6 of them, just the law of averages. They're going to need probably 10 semi finals to get that number. They're going to find their way somewhere. They're just going to whittle themselves away and they're going to get four in a round and Two will go out and one will go out. Just work at it by that. Maybe I'm straw clutching. But what, what, what's the price? It. What's the price of twelve Irish semi finals? <laughs> <laughs> now don't get sarky, and you were getting you were bad luck with the six finalists last year at Nottingham. <laughs> like or every every finalist game. Um, the, 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 the best I'm chance. Sure. The best chance of stopping the Irish is definitely Brexit, because it's made things <laughs> a lot more complicated. <laughs> a, a ferry strike. We'll do our we'll do our usual top time market in time bands, not the uh, not the thing as usual. Always got a top bitch market, although a few of those bitches have been going by the wayside. I had Kulavani Chick in the bed for a long time and Judy showed a picture of his puppies the other day. Not sorry, to Kulav Chick's puppies, not generally <laughs> to get him right. <laughs> so uh, she was removed from the betting as well. But um but yeah, they, it's, it's the usual, the usual fun and guys. There'll be plenty of markets doing as well. We're actually going to do also a um to reach the final market. Once we know the draw and know the full the full one nine two, we'll pull up the whole what every every single of the hundred and ninety two dogs in the first round and to reach the final market. It'll be something new for us and something I know a lot of people have had a, a bit of interest in. So hopefully we might take a few pounds on that. And there could be could be some that keep sneaking through, the ones that finish third all the time there to get through to the final. I'm sure there'll be a few, you know, down the bottom of the big radar there that can just sneak in all the time. And could be a big price finalist like we rarely be get. You know, we had a Smurfs machine last year get into the final and been plenty of big price dogs got to the final before at Toaster. So that could create some interest as well. Maybe get a few of the top ones out of the uh, out of the betting. So Lofty, can we get it uh, here like confirmed? You are gonna do a market for the track records go. Uh, no, I'll just keep going, won't it? So it's no, there's no point in that, honestly. <laughs> Once bit and twice shy with that, Julian, it wasn't it wasn't on my watch really the uh, the Nottingham one either. But although I was up there and uh, there were plenty of people coming down, sort of claiming the money straight after the uh, the clock going there from um, and then the uh, Pat Gill Ford his name is now escaped me. Shouldn't have done really, but oh, uh, Logan. there we go. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, but yeah, it was just well, <laughs> you know, well, it's not 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 the best, not in history of style. That wasn't anyway for price wise, anyway, certainly. Right, I'm going to come to Infortune and JK, both of you, put you on the spot. And I want to know how many Irish finalists and also um, a bitch to follow. Obviously, that market's not up yet until we see the entries, but the bitch to go furthest. So, Ian, I know you've got a strong view on that one. Well, we could probably have one bitch. Bally Mac Ariel, um, there was rumours the last few days here in Ireland, she wasn't in the Oaks entry, um, that, oh, she's in season. I, I always knew she was coming to the English Derby if she was well in herself. I spoke to Liam Dowling. Mm-hmm. He thinks he has a right. If this lady turns up at her very best, she should be disputing favouritism. She's an absolutely incredible lady. Um, she's been very disappointing this year, though. There's no question about that. But I can promise you one thing. She is an absolute superstar. And I would take her ahead of any bitch in the, in the world, never mind in, in the country or in the UK. I think she's an absolute superstar. I really look forward to seeing her. And I hope, I hope that she turns out to be the bitch that we all think she is. And um, if she does turn up, I think she'll be very, very close to the finish, not just to being top bitch, but to being uh, the top performer in the derby. Okay. And how many Irish finalists? Um, six is a six is a big ask. I, I'm going to say, um, what way the prices? Five, Eleven five to was... four for four. Five is five four. to one. Eleven to four for three. Seven to two for two. Six to one for one. Thirty-three to one for none. That sh- that should be that should be three times that price, really, Julian. I, I, I was actually thinking that's a fair lay, you know. Yeah, I, no, I, I agree. Yeah, lay that for a few quid, you know. Uh, may, maybe lay that for 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 a score, and that's your, that's six hundred quid safe for for the next for the next month or so. Um, I'm gonna go with five at five to one. I think that's uh, I think that's big. Okay, JK. Well, I'm not sure how many bitches are going to be in it, but Zach's tornado did nothing wrong the other night for Mark Wallace. Um, I too am a massive fan of Bally Mac Ariel, but I would want to see her telling me that she was coming back because there's no doubt she hasn't been the same force in a few runs this year that she was uh, last year. Uh, as for Irish finalists, how many did you go for, Ian? 
Five. Well, I was thinking of five. I'll take four then. I'll take four. I think, uh, look, as I say, if, it, if, if you had 12 top class greyhounds coming over, I think you'd do well to get two, maybe three through, even how good they were. But the fact that you're going to have numbers as well as quality, I think we are we are looking at a, probably looking at a four. But as, as we know, you never win at Toaster. I'm going to go with three for what it's worth. Also at 11 to four. Lofty, very quickly. I favour three as well. I've gone middle pin, yeah. Just made that favourite. And I've not laid three. I've only laid four, five and six. So. <laughs> Good, right. We're going with three. Listen, maybe we can reconvene, gentlemen, when uh, we have 10 English dogs in the semi-finals. Uh, not if it's the other way around, perhaps. But I think, you, I think you'll find fun. Ian's, be 12 years uh, from Ian's, now. Ian's Wi-Fi might have gone down if that's the case. No, 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 no. I'll front up. I'll front up. <laughs> Okay, well, let's see how it goes. One thing's for sure, it's very exciting times at the moment. We're really looking forward to it. And uh, may the best dog win. Thank we you very much for your time, guys. And uh, enjoy all the action at Toaster. Thank Thank you. Cheers.